Hi everyone and welcome to day 20, Tough Love. Tough Love Tuesday, gotta love it. Okay, so today we're gonna self-assess our 31 day journey. If you don't have your top 10 goals by now, um, and if you're that person who says, okay, I'll get to it eventually, then you're probably doing yourself and your future self a disservice. And you're doing the ones you love most probably a disservice because you're not following through on those big goals. All the future things you say you want and that you're promising to your family it, are not happening. By you doing, by you, like, think about all your financial goals, your health goals, your relationship goals, quality family time, vacation goals, and maybe a side business that is going to pay for all this. And you're actually kidding yourself and going into all of this. And you're not putting a check mark beside the stuff you want to do. You are not only saying no to you, your spouse, your kids, your future kids, your future self. So you're letting yourself down, letting all those people down, and it's just not a good recipe. It's just a recipe for disaster. So over the past 20 days, let's be real with ourselves. How consistent have you been? Have you shown up every single day? Have you worked on your goals? And that's more just like not just watching these videos, but have you actually used these videos as a springboard to put your goals into action and actually come up with a plan that is viable? Um, actually put, put this stuff into action. That's the most important part. What are you doing after these videos? Are you putting those goals into action? Have you touched on all 10 of your goals? That Have you laid out all your 10 goals? Do you feel like you're moving forward this month or is it the same story as last month? Um, how consistent have you been in the pursuit of one or all of those top 10 goals? You can rate your scale, yourself on a scale of one to 10. If you're not consistent, this is one of the key ingredients, okay? To be consistent, don't let up, keep going. Um, how long have you stuck with this? Let's say you're on a health journey and this isn't on a scale of one to 10, but um, you could do it in months, weeks, or days, something like that. But how often on average do you stick with things like big things like big health goals or weight loss goal, new fitness goal? How long do you do it for on average? Is it weeks, days, months? Are you super consistent? Do you even try hard? Um, and I want you to have in your mind one of your biggest goals, like maybe you want to crush a side hustle or your business. Um, maybe you're starting it and that's your financial future, the side hustle you're starting and you want to crush that. How often do you let up? Maybe you go hard for a week and then you're like witness protection program. No one can reach you for a week. Um, how consistent are you over a period of time? We just talked about consistency now and that was like a one out of 10 scale, um, but you can do it in weeks. How many weeks do you stick with stuff? Let's say it's a health goal. How many weeks on average? Are you consistent? And this is going to differ from goal to goal and from person to person. Um, how good are you at longevity, which is the second category, consistency and longevity. How grateful are you for these goals? And that can be difficult at like five o'clock in the morning when you're trying to like reach some weight loss goals. Um, and we don't want to do our workouts. We don't all feel grateful at that time. And when we are busting our tail to develop our side hustle for our families, it's difficult for sure. But you have to become um, that person because no person in their freaking right mind could have ever pulled all this information, such as three different pieces of content, two videos, Instagram posts, amongst other stuff, every single day. That's 93 pieces of content in 31 days. How does one do that? People ask me. How do I stay motivated? How do I not let up? How do I have longevity? Well, you better freaking love it and better be dang grateful. And you better have that anchor in your life. That is your gratitude point. So trust me, it's hard. There's lots going on. Everyone's busy, but there's moments where I want to toss the computer out the window and everything. But when I see your comments and the people that are excited and the people that it affects and the messages I get, it's all worth it. Every single day, I do it all over again. You should always have something that you're grateful or excited about for your big goal. Here's why. If you can't get excited about your own business or your big freaking goal of losing weight or paying for your dream family vacation or your health goal, financial goal, business goal, whatever it is, if you can't get excited about it or you're not grateful for it, then how the heck do you think potential customers, your family that's supp supp supposed to support this endeavor, get excited about it? There's no way. 
Um, okay, so that leads us into number four. Are you BSing yourself? Chances are, possibly. If you have not yet achieved this goal and it's been a little too long, I'd be willing to wager, and since it's Tough Love Tuesday, you probably are BSing yourself because I was. And here's the thing. When you're lying to yourself, you're doing yourself a disservice, but also you might think you're sugarcoating it because it maybe feels nice and it feels better, but you're actually doing yourself the least level of respect that you possibly could because here's the thing, okay? We're, okay. We're okay to be more honest towards other people. Well, most of us are, it depends on the personality, I guess. And sometimes we sugarcoat stuff and BS ourselves towards a goal. But when you're doing that, you're taking away all the respect from yourself in the pursuit of that goal. Like honor your damn self um, and shoot, like shoot yourself straight. And where am I factually, where am I actually on this goal, on this action plan? And getting really, really good at gut checking yourself in how much have I really done in the pursuit of those top 10 goals and how much am I BSing myself on a daily basis? Do I feel like I'm actually moving forward or I'm just what, or am I just watching Netflix? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how you do it. That's literally one of the biggest keys to success is to stop BSing yourself and get incredibly good at self-assessment every day. I guess that's the point of my planner and why and how I gut check. Um, I gut check my I gut check myself daily because I check off those top ten things on my list and ask myself the questions: Did I do this? Am I moving forward towards my goal or am I not? And if I'm not, then I need to change up the strategy and get towards get an action plan that will actually work. That's why at the end of the week, you self-assess. And that's why at the end of the month, you self-assess and see whether or not you're moving towards the stuff that actually matters to you and to your goal and whether you've done nothing. You can evaluate that. Self-assess your consistency on a scale of one to 10 each week in terms of longevity. How grateful are you towards one of your top 10 goals this month? And how much do you BS yourself? And to those people who say, oh yeah, I'm a 10 out of 10 and I'm just perfect and I'm crush crushing it at life. Cool. Uh, let, you just let yourself zero room for, go for growth. Love ya, but it's true. Tough love Tuesday. Leave yourself room for growth. Um, if you always think you're perfect, um, there's no room to grow. You can be like a 9.5, okay? I'll leave you a 9.5 out of 10, okay? But Tony Robbins probably isn't even a 9.5, not even Oprah. So calm your cookies, all right? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video of tough love and I'm super excited to share everything to come in the future. Have a good night or day and take care. Bye guys.